Hello everyone, Amanda here from ScreenPenMommy.co.uk and I'm going to do another lovely project to use in the limited time snow is glistening. It's an outstanding set. You will see projects all over Pinterest made using this set. Don't delay, it is unavailable after the end of this month, the end of November, it's gone. It's a limited time stamp set. So here is what I have created. I did show sneak peeks on my Instagram and Facebook and I created this beautiful pink Christmas card. No, <laughs> why not? Um, and we've got a couple of special techniques here. I have stamped using the shimmer paint. So I'm going to show you how to do that. This one's heat embossed as well. And we've got some lovely layers. The only thing that I'm not adding to the second card are these little snowflakes here. These are cut from the Colourful Season um, thinlets. Uh, and for this card I'm going to add just the jewels and I'm going to leave the snowflakes off. Just because I'm too lazy to cut some more. Um, <laughs> it's the truth. So I have petal pink cardstock here. This measures four and one eighth by the full length of the A4 cardstock. And then I've scored it at five and seven eighths. In the centre we've got a piece of di Dazzling Diamonds Glimmer Paper here which measures, let me check, this measures, oh, wrong way, three and three quarters by uh, five and five eighths, that should be, yes, and then I have my stamp player, which is quite a bit smaller, and um, because I want to be able to see that Dazzling Diamonds paper there, that glimmer paper, um, and this one is three and, three and, three eighths by five and a, a quarter. I leave all of the measurements over, at my, over on my blog at scrimpingmommy.co.uk so make sure you check that out. So first of all I'm going to attach my Dazzling Diamonds layer to my card base. Just get that neatly lined up and that's got quite a small increment so take your time over it over it I'm kind of talking to myself there as well and um, to make sure that I remember to get it nice and straight okay oops I'm hitting the camera <laughs> right so that's that one and then we're going to do some stamping now because it's a photopolymer set I am going to just quickly bring over my piercing mat which doubles up as a stamping mat to just give you that little bit of extra cushion when you're using the photopolymers. So I'm going to first of all do the top part which is this awesome, um, if I just bring the sample in, it looks like falling snow. And there is two stamps there, there's the top one with the big snowflakes and then there's a smaller one there and you can put them one at the bottom, one at the top. Oh, this I've seen so many beautiful projects made using this set it's just uh, it, it, it's ultra versatile i've seen it done in all sorts of colors just beautiful just really really beautiful so i'm mounting my stamp on my block i'm not convinced that's straight i'm going to put it on my on my grid mat and then add it to my block like so okay and then i'm using petal pink because we're having a pink christmas <laughs> And I'm going to just stamp along the top edge of my card. I'm just tilting it to the side because I, I tend to, when I'm writing or stamping, I tend to do it sideways. I don't know why, but I just do. So there we go. And because they're photopolymer, you can see through them. So you can see exactly where you're stamping. So it's really easy to line that back up again. Okay, like so. Perfect. So we can move that out of the way for a moment. In fact, what we can do is we can add that now to our the rest of our card base. And I am going to use wet glove for this because I'm sticking it to that glitter surfaced paper. Um, in my personal opinion, wet glue is just a bit better. It will grip the glitter easier, and when it's dry, it will be, it will come off. Okay, 
Bearing in mind I've given you quite a large increment there so you've got a nice fat border so you can see that lovely sparkly paper. We don't want to hide it all of it. Okay. So I'm going to leave that to one side to dry now while I make the rest of the parts for the cards. So now we're going to make the trees. So super easy. The first one is using the petal pink cardstock. And this one we're going to heat emboss with white embossing powder. Use my dispity and put the tree on my block. Beg your pardon, I'm reaching across the screen. That's so rude. Okay. I'm going to load that on. Doesn't matter if I go straight on my block or not because I am going to cut it out afterwards. So, okay, so this is the first technique. This is heat embossing, and then I'm going to show you the technique that I have used with the shimmer paints to create my pink Christmas tree, and that's done beautifully. So I'll just bring in some spare cardstock and my white oops I'm knocking things over all over my desk some white embossing powder okay I'm just going to actually just give that another coat just to make sure because I want that white to be nice and visible so that all of that beautiful pattern of that stunning set Stunning stamp stands out. Okay, let me get rid of that. We've got my heat gun here, so you might want to turn your volume down whilst I just heat up this embossing powder. Beautiful. It doesn't take long for that embossing powder to start turning and setting. I just have the noisiest heat tool in the entire universe, but there you go. So that's our heat embossing done. Just move that out of the way. And then all I have to do is cut that out. Very simple. Okay. I'm going to cut it that way so that I get it nice and fairly straight. Okay. There we go, so that's that one done, and now we're going to do the white one, so here I have some white cardstock, let me just put my lid on there, and we're going to make one now using shimmer paints, because you can stamp with these, I'm going to show you how, so I've got, this is just a little lid from some embellishments, an old one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use two drops of the paint, maybe three, I want to make sure I've got plenty but it does go a very long way and then I'm going to dye it with some ink, this is actually powder pink this one, so it's a slightly different shade to the rest of the card but I wanted it to just stand out that little bit more and I'm adding, just going to add about three drops, in fact I'll go for four um, and then I'm going to mix that in. Okay, it's quite bizarre how it looks blue there, doesn't it? You start and mix it in, it'll go to its normal pink colour. Okay, just mixing it in with a an old metal pokey tool. You could use a cocktail stick or a coffee stirrer, or you could use anything. The end of a pencil don't really matter. If you just mix that in really really well 
you've got yourself some pink shimmer paint. Okay. Just give it a good mix. It stays wet for quite a while. It's quite good. You do have to be careful. Um, it doesn't dry immediately. I'm going to dry mine off with my heat gun. So I'm just going to set that to one side. And then I've got a little sponge dauber here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my stamp back in. Let me just move that out of the way. And I'm just going to add some ink on my sponge dauber. And very gently, just dab that all over the stamp. So you want plenty on, however you don't want it um, overly saturated or it will just go in a splodgy mess, <laughs> for want of a better word. So you need, it's kind of like, you might want to have a practice. It is kind of trial and error um, between getting too much and not having enough. But the main thing is to make sure all of that stamp is covered and you will get a nice, a nice image and make sure that you've put enough ink in your shimmer that it shows up. Otherwise, you're just going to get a, sh a shimmery tree <laughs> with no colour. Okay, and then I'm going to stamp that. So the other trick is to add nice even pressure, but don't press on too hard because again, you're going to um, just splodge that pin and have a not a defined kind of pattern. So it's you know it, it's one you might need to practice have a go and don't worry if your first attempt isn't perfect okay because mine wasn't and then you've got to lift it off straight away and there you go you do get that lovely lovely pattern and I'm just going to quickly dry mine with my heat tool. So you do get a nice defined pattern there, it is super pretty, you can see those snowflakes, you can see the detail on the stamp and at the same time we've got that lovely shimmer. So let's move that out of the way, okay, so then all we need to do is again cut it out very basically following the lines of the stamp. Just be careful and make sure it mine is dry. Make sure it is dry before you start handling it, otherwise you'll smudge it. Duke. Just going to trim the bottom there. All right, there we go. So what I want to do now is I want to just make sure that. My card base has stuck down on that shimmer Dazzling Diamonds cardstock. Bring in both of my trays and then I'm going to kind of look whereabouts I'm going to put them. I'm going to put them about there and I'm just going to make myself a little pencil mark. So I'm having that one there and that one and, and the pencil mark is roughly the centre of that tree because I'm going to stamp on the little tree stand. So I'm putting my little pencil marks there. So that's roughly where I need to stamp. Okay, so if I just get the little tree base out of here. Stick that on my block, bring my ink over. And just very carefully stamp that. Okay, and then when you've given it time to dry, you can then rub those pencil marks out. I'll have to heat set mine. So that I can then just gently rub those pencil marks out and you won't see them. There we go. So now we're going to attach our lovely, beautiful trees we've got one that's heat embossed and one which is the done with shimmer paint so super beautiful I'm using dimensionals okay. so 
So the first one I'm going to stick about there. And then my second tree here is going to go there. Now I'm just going to assess where I'm going to put my dimensionals because I don't want a dimensional on this far corner because then it will be because this tree's already got dimensionals on, then it'll make that corner stand up higher, won't it? We don't want that. I'm going to put it about there. Okay. One, two, three. So let's have a look. So I don't need it on that bottom corner almost. Okay. So I'll have it on there. Take these off. And then we've got our lovely sentiment. I'm going to show you what I've used because I have done a little die cut. This is a, a bit more of an in-depth card. Um, a little bit more detail. I like to do some cards that are really basic and some cards that have just that little bit more detail in. So I've got this small little die cut, if I just show you. This has come from the Stitched Labels Thinlet set. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment and I'm having just for, um, I think it says for you, does it? Yeah, it's this one. Oh, there it is. So I'll just take my tree stump off and put my sentiment back on. Okay, like so. And I'm getting petal pink ink back in. And again, because the photo polymer, I'll be able to see those words and I'll be able to get them straight without any bother. There we go, and that's on my beauty flat. So I can add dimensionals on there. One, two. Take that off. I can move. Don't need that. And I'm going to attach it about here. Okay, and then we have some of the beautiful pink rhinestones um, I'll just use this poker tool here even though it's got paint on it <laughs> just saves me hunting and I'm just going to add these little rhinestones like little tree toppers just get it where, exactly where I want it there we go as I said on my original sample I've also got a die cut snowflake so that's another way to step it up. Um, but on this one I'm just adding just the rhinestones for now. I think that looks really pretty. And then just for the final touch, we're going to have a cute little bow, if I can manage it, out of twine. Twine is so much easier to, well, theoretically, I'm not going to speak before, <laughs> too soon as it were, count my chickens, but in general, one could argue that um, twine is easier to tie bows from. It's more forgiving, it lies, generally lies a bit better and a bit flatter and normally, to, I'm not bothering with that, I've got bored of that now. <laughs> it's normally easier, but I've got bored, I'm not doing it. But there's the, my original one with the snowflakes and the little bow and here's my second one without snowflakes and no bow because I got bored of trying to do it <laughs> but look at these lovely techniques go and give them a try don't forget your shimmer paint you can stamp with it how awesome thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon bye for now